Hi, I'm Rachel and this is my July mid-month 2024 AM reading update. Definitely don't want to get this out any later in the month. Gotta go ahead and, uh, you know, push off uh, some new reading, what I can do. Uh, this is my first official only July uh, update, uh, and as such, I have finally posted my June literary newsletter, <laughs> so there's something. Uh, I post a monthly newsletter to my blog where I have snippets of uh, the Goodreads reviews that, of the books I've read the month before. I have uh, literary news that caught my fancy. I have a book pick that I post to Bookstagram, uh, a book quote, etc. Anyway, it's all linked down below. But now that we're officially getting into the new <laughs> month of July, I do have a new start to a particular part of this video where I uh, review a short story, one short story at a time, and I just picked up a brand new literary journal. This is the Michigan Quarterly Review, the Winter 2024 edition. And uh, to start off, I read the short story The Ladies of the City by Sheba Kareem. Uh, and uh, I think we started on a pretty good note. This is a short story that um, centers on a Pakistani-American young girl around 12 years old, starting to have a little bit of a uh, sexual awakening, if you will, in a culture that isn't quite so open to that idea. Like we start out learning about uh, fellow Muslim girls in the community who have been cast out basically for marrying outside of the faith or you know doing things that might be sexually immoral in the eyes of the community but to western eyes probably wouldn't be uh and our main character ruby might have that pakistani ancestry might be muslim but she's american as well and uh anyway i think it's pretty natural to start to you know, notice some of the boys in her community and like, you know, get a crush, have some flutterings. And also she does apparently have some access to American television and movies. Not entirely sure how or, or why, uh, especially given her mother's reaction to the uh, Carrie Hughes uh, magazine cut out from uh, The Princess Bride. I guess technically that's a pretty old movie. Um, and uh, anyway, she's just, you know, starting to, you know, go through these motions, even though, uh, you know, her mother uh, starts to come out as somebody who is a sort of a very uh, hyper overprotective. Uh, and uh, at one point, uh, she even has to go to a female classmate's house to do a project together. And the mother, like, uh, wouldn't let her go until, you know, she, um, uh, she called uh, the girl's mother and knew exactly like which uh, male relatives would or would not be in the house. And then when she finds the Carrie Hughes uh, magazine uh, picture under her daughter's, uh, you know, bed, she immediately uh, like uh, goes to uh, the house to confront her. And it does turn out that this uh, girl that uh, Ruby is hanging out with, they're technically supposed to be working on their project, but... Uh, Ruby uh, Shauna is um, more, you know, I guess, you know, tr traditionally, stereotypically Western, uh, and um, they end up finding her mother's dildo, so there's that. So that's what the, uh, you know, hyper-conservative uh, Pakistani-American mother walks in on. So, uh, yeah, uh, I feel like, you know, the way that it's done uh, in here, it's a little less, you know, dramatic or salacious than it might seem. I do feel like there's some really interesting ruminations about Ruby being caught between these cultures and her own natural desires uh, and uh, how that um, plays out within her certain, certain specific circumstances. And otherwise, I'm currently in the middle of some books. I'm not as far along in either of them as I would hope, but uh, I'm the most far along in Florence Adler Swims Forever by Rachel Beanland. And this was my page 112 tag pick for June, <laughs> not even July, uh, but uh, I, you know, got a little bit behind on some reading uh, back in June. We'll have to see uh, what I can get to this month. Uh, I do think I'll be finishing this soon. I am really enjoying it, you know, even more than I thought I would or, you know, admittedly, 
I was hopeful for this book and then I read the page 112 and I guess I liked it but I feel like I was pushing it a little further than maybe I should and I was surprised by it that it wasn't as directly related to Florence and her family as I thought it would be. But um, anyway, this is a historical fiction novel uh, that uh, takes place uh, in the months of 1934 in the summer after Florence Adler, who was in fact a very good swimmer and uh, training to do a very uh, uh, tough, uh, you know, and impressive uh, swim across the channel, uh, she ends up you know, drowning herself uh, before she even, uh, you know, gets on the boat to travel there. Um, and she's just uh, at her uh, family home in Atlantic City and, uh, you know, bad luck befalls her and she's witnessed by her niece Gussie and a uh, family friend of sorts, Anna, and then her parents. Uh, they all, uh, you know, are there on the scene uh, and then also her uh, swim coach of sorts and uh, kind of uh, guy who's romantically interested in her, Stuart, who's the person I read from uh, in page 112. And all of these characters actually um, get POVs as well as uh, Florence's sister and brother-in-law, Isaac. Um, her sister, Fanny, and Isaac, neither of them are there. The main reason Fanny isn't there is because she is in the hospital with a high-risk pregnancy. The year before, she had lost a baby, in fact, and now she's just a couple months away from giving birth. And so as um, Florence and Fanny's mother, Esther, is coming to terms within the moment of her second daughter's sudden loss, she has this uh, sudden, uh, you know, recognition of sorts in an extreme sort of way that uh, telling uh, Fanny the news could be, you know, harmful to her and to the baby and to the pregnancy. And she decides uh, immediately to basically make this a big secret until after the baby is born. Like they move uh, Fanny to a completely different room and like, and they also keep the news of Florence's death incredibly secret, even for the times. Um, and so we're kind of going month by month and jumping from the characters' heads. Um, and there's a lot of other subplots going on that give this story more texture as well. And I definitely have uh, gotten into it a fair bit. Uh, definitely, you know, lived up to my expectations, even if I felt like the page 112 tag, I was doing a little heavy lifting with that particular page. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, uh, of Surrender Dorothy by Meg Wallitzer, which is a, uh, one of my favorite Wallitzer books, which is about the sudden death of one character. And then we like hop into the heads of her mother and her friends to sort of understand who this character was to them. Uh, and in this story, uh, it's not quite that, you know, insular and contained. I mean, Florence and her impact on these characters is definitely a big part of it, but they are also dealing with other stuff, uh, particularly Anna, who is a uh, German-Jewish refugee in 1934, and she has an uh, interesting connection with um, Joseph, uh, who is the patriarch of the family. Um, that Joseph, uh, once upon a time, was a Hungarian immigrant and was engaged to Anna's mother. And that didn't work out, but now he wants to do whatever he can to get Anna and her parents out of Germany uh, as uh, the, the Third Reich is getting more powerful. Uh, and he's able to get Anna out on a student visa to attend college in, in the U.S., um, but they're having a lot more trouble with her parents and things are starting to feel more desperate on that front. Uh, and I feel like, you know, this is actually something that uh, a fair amount of Jewish families did in the 1930s uh, because uh, everyone knew that things were getting more desperate uh, and that, uh, you know, as always it could end in, in violence. I mean, I don't think anyone quite knew how depraved the violence would become, the, uh, the, the, the killings, the genocide, all of that, but they knew that it was going to, you know, reach levels of uh, death and violence of some sort. This was not necessarily new in terms of uh, European history and the Jews. Uh, so that's one thing going on. And also, but, you know, you know, it's not, you know, even squarely focused on that either. It's, you know, plays into insecurities and strains within Esther and Joseph's relationship, especially as Esther is mourning a daughter of similar age. Um, 
And then Isaac, Fanny's husband, is uh, somebody who has this chip on his shoulder and feels like he's owed something. And, you know, he might be the most unlikable character, basically. He's a bit of a, a swindler. He, you know, is somebody who uh, takes risks that he shouldn't take because he feels like he's owed something and doesn't necessarily seem to care uh, too much about most other people. Um, and, uh, yeah, then there's... Uh, Gussie, just the, the young seven-year-old trying to understand uh, what's going on around her. And uh, there's, uh, you know, Anna and Stuart having a uh, burgeoning relationship, which also kind of feels like she might be taking Florence's place, although Florence was a fairly different character. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like the, the character work and the situations are intriguing. I mean, in a way... It's surprising in a way that this is, uh, the focus is still, I guess, melodramatic in a way, because ultimately these three months, you know, and I, I should mention Fanny does, you know, she's in the hospital. She does think a lot about Florence, but she's thinking about other stuff as well, like her own health. And, uh, you know, the, you know, she's mourning the baby she lost. And now she has this other baby that, uh, you know, this difficult pregnancy. Uh, and so, and she's the one, you know, who's living in this dream world because she's the only one who doesn't know Florence is dead. And it's so, you know, it's traumatic. It's like the worst thing of like, why is my sister staying away from me? And the worst answer is, oh, because she's dead. Uh, but I, I think I've rambled a little off my first point, which is in a way, you know, this is actually based off of Bean Land's personal history. This happened uh, in her family that uh, a relative died tragically and suddenly and uh, they kept it secret from another relative. And I feel like that had repercussions throughout the generations, keeping that secret. And you can see how, you know, it's it's a complicated decision, but it's also sort of monstrous uh, to go ahead with it. And, it, it. and it'll have impact later on. And we're actually not, dis you know, this book doesn't discuss the later impact, I don't think. It's really very immediate after Florence's death. And I guess I, in a way I have mixed feelings about it, but then again, I'm so entrenched in the story as it is that maybe I should just, you know, shut up and enjoy the ride. And so that's um, more or less what I'm doing. I enjoy might not be entirely the right word, but it definitely is a compelling ride. And with a lot of uh, Jewish texture as well, which uh, makes me happy. And the next book I'm reading is also uh, Jewish uh, historical fiction. Uh, this is Lublin by Manya Wilkinson, which is uh, recently published, just in 2024. And I put it on my uh, Mock Reads Historical Fiction reading list that I'll link down below. And very excitingly, I heard about this book uh, through Eric Carl Anderson here on BookTube as he was ruminating way long ago now about uh, what books might make it onto the long list for the Women's Prize this year. And I think he had just read this book. And uh, lucky for me, maybe that's why he mentioned it. And I decided to put it on the list uh, because it's about uh, three uh, Polish boys at the turn of the 20th century. Uh, taking a, a trip to Lublin to sell some paintbrushes and it's about who these boys are and it's about this fallen uh you know Jewish uh, reality and you know it's weird to say that I mean it's just the reality I suppose that all historical fiction is written in the present and not the past so that even though these people don't know about the holocaust it looms I think uh, it just naturally looms over it uh but I feel like also like Florence Adler swims forever. I think that it's, the Holocaust stays in its lane. I mean, there's plenty for these people to feel ostracized about, you know, life for Jews in Poland before the Holocaust also wasn't that great. <laughs> and there was a lot of violence. And, uh, and so they're coming across uh, those sorts of uh, realities and ruminations as well. But um, I feel like I'm in very early chapters and it's a very insular sort of book about uh, you know, what these characters are doing and who they are so that uh, you have to pay attention to sort of grasp it. And, and I, I honestly wish, I, I hope what I can do maybe in the next couple of days is maybe sit down and read it more quickly. Um, right now, I'm kind of in a crazy <laughs> time right now this week. My birthday was actually on Monday, and my parents and my niece and nephew are coming into town uh, this afternoon uh, for the next couple days, but I myself am also uh, prepping for a job interview, <laughs> so it's, it's weird timing. It's iffy timing, but uh, that's what I have to go ahead and do uh, 
after um, you know finishing this video, I have to go ahead and prep for a job interview that's going to happen tomorrow morning. <laughs> after that all happens, hopefully I can you know feel a little less pressure and maybe find a little more time to like curl up uh, and finish this book. We shall see. And yeah, that about covers it for me now. And I do really uh, need to go on and, and get going with my day. These next couple of days are going to be a little jam packed. Uh, a weird mix of a little bit of sort of anxiety for an upcoming interview and all of that, but also some excitement. I've taken the time off of work to spend time with my family to celebrate my birthday, and uh, probably the worst part of that is uh, seeing if I can brave this heat, which uh, in the D.C. area is definitely inching up into the hundreds, or low hundreds, but still, <laughs> uh, which uh, in Fahrenheit is very hot. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I hope you are all having a great time with your mid-month reading and that uh, your weather is temperate and kind to you. Uh, I should be back on this channel in the next couple of days with my monthly author's answer video, so stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.